Hello, everyone. This is Marta. As I told you last week, I would leave this audio recording for those of you that didn't manage to attend to my first tutorial. This audio recording is not aimed at providing you with the substance or the content of the last tutorial, but only to briefly mention some of the practicalities that I shared with your colleagues. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my teaching style, about my teaching methodology, about my expectations, and also I'm going to leave you with some hints. As far as my teaching style is concerned, I read an article the other day that talked about four kinds of parenting. The authoritarian one, the authoritative one, the permissive, and the uninvolved. While going through the article, I realized that I'm kind of an authoritative teacher because I create rules, I enforce rules, but at the same time, I always try to give you a good experience. I always try to create an innovative and nice learning environment. Which rules will I enforce during this course? Well, I'm basically speaking about the rules that Mark put together in the course manual. There you can find some deadlines for submission, you can find some rules, how you should behave in terms of submitting your memorandums and the tutorials that you should come to prepared. So these are the rules that I'm going to enforce. And please do not forget that for the memorandum, I'll be looking forward to original contributions that do not consist of a cut and copy and copy and paste from the memorandums of your colleagues. A little bit about teaching methodology. So there are three points that I would like to stress. The first one is that as you really didn't like that much PBL or most of you would really look forward to get rid of it as much as possible, we will not have a PBL typical training in our classes. So in my tutorials, you should expect sort of a Socratic methodology. So I will provoke you with some questions. I'll try to push you and to nudge you into explaining to me and your colleagues your understanding of the content of this course. I will at the same time try to do a contribution of structuring information and knowledge for you so that you can actually add on to what you have learned before. The second aspect on my methodology has to do with the so-called deputy discussion leader. So we don't have, like I just said, the typical PBL methodology, but I do think that it's important that each of you, one per you per tutorial, would kind of be someone that can help me out or can help your colleagues out in case the discussion comes to a standstill. So imagine there is a question being placed and no one really manages to come up with the right answer. So I will come to you to provide the answer to this question. Every deputy discussion leader would actually be randomly generated every week. So last week we already generated the name of the person that's going to be the discussion leader of the next tutorial. The third point is the so-called graphic or visual facilitator. So some of you probably didn't hear about that. Some of you already saw the video that I posted on Facebook. Basically graphical facilitators are the ones that draw in a whiteboard to assist people that are discussing or brainstorming or thinking about a problem. This is a methodology that has been used in several conferences, but also actually in a lot of business environments. So it's very likely that if you go to a law firm in the US or someplace else, that you would actually see this happening while working. I know that most of you cannot draw. I know that most of you think that you're actually terrible drawers. I'm actually a very terrible drawer myself. But here it's not about the quality of the drawer, but yes, your capacity of coming up with symbols that sticks to everybody's minds. There's actually statistics and scientific proofs that the part of your brain that memorizes images is actually bigger than the one that memorizes words, which means that this is a good 
process for you to memorize information. Another issue of the methodology is that, as you can see, I publish a few things in Facebook and I will try to always answer the questions that you publish in Facebook, but the best way to communicate with me is via email. You'll find my email in the course manual. In terms of methodology of the classes, I suggest that we would do one case per part of the tutorial with a 10 minute break in between. This will give us, hopefully, in most of the cases, a few minutes for a discussion or for practical questions that you may have. In terms of my expectations, I would expect above all that you come prepared for class, that you know what we will be talking about, that you'll be ready and open to respond if you're being questioned and to actively contribute for the discussion. I also do think that you should come prepared because otherwise both you, myself and your colleagues would have the feeling that you kind of wasted two hours of your precious time. Most of you that don't come prepared, you will feel tempted to go to social media, to text your significant others or to talk to your colleagues and all of these are things that are disturbing to the dynamics of the class. So please come prepared to the tutorial or feel free to not come to the tutorial at all. Finally, my hints for you to be successful in this course. First of all, and it goes without saying, prepare in advance. Do so before the lecture by Dr. Mark Awakami. Do also so before the tutorial so that you can apply your knowledge to the solution of cases in a very efficient and quick way. If you have any questions on the content of the tutorial, please don't hesitate in raising your hand and asking the same question. Most of the times, I will expect your colleagues to provide the answer. In case this is not possible, I will obviously help you and provide you with a solution to your question. If you have any questions on practicalities, then I would suggest you to address me either before the tutorial or after. Finally, and this is my last hint for now, don't be afraid of asking questions. They are no, not such a thing as silly questions. They're just questions with some simple answers. So don't be afraid also of participating. There's absolutely no problem in you to saying something that is not absolutely correct or taking an initiative that is not the best one to take. Try to be as proactive as you can. This is a great training for this course and for your professional academic life in general. Good luck and I see you next week.